put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. X-Men Apocalypse in 3D. Briefly, the 3D is good, it adds depth. And really makes some of the bigger scenes feel bigger and things feel closer. Yes, simply Apocalypse, not Age of Apocalypse, as would hint at the much beloved storyline. Simply Apocalypse, the subtitle of the second Resident Evil movie, the fourth Rec movie, neither particularly well received. Ultra, Age of Ultron really didn't need to be called that. I, I have no idea about the Transformers movie. Maybe. It, it could be. This is, this is supposed to be the oldest mutant. He was around when they, I mean, he built the pyramids. It is possible that the villain of this movie is very self-conscious about the Age of Apocalypse. And he makes these hilarious grand statements like everything they've built will fall. Every domino, every house of cards. And of the ashes, we will build a better world. So pick up your glue sticks. This is set in 83. Please ignore that no one looks that much older. 20 years since first class? Really? That's... They actually, they, they, they even have a line, I don't know if that was like, you know, some, an attempt to be cute, but, but like, I think it's Xavier commenting on Rose Byrne, who does look great. She doesn't look that much, no, no, she really, you know, no one, no one does, have you noticed that? First class was five years ago, why are you, why are you making it four times as much time does does it is it necessary that it's only like once per decade that a really big thing revolving mutants happens? I, I can buy ten years having passed since first class, as was the case in Days of Future Past. Anyway, age has you know ages have had no no consistency in this series since the moment that detailed flashbacks was introduced. Anyway, Apocalypse, an extremely powerful mutant, some say a god, returns, threatening the world with, the hint is in his name, Annihilation, exactly. The, the X-Men gather, Mystique helps out some, yeah, she 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 goes around recruiting. She goes around rescuing mutants, and yes, so you know, gather a team so that they might have a fighting chance. Mystique is actually independent, again, and yeah, she's going around rescuing mutants who are in danger, and. Apocalypse, one of the, the, it wasn't, at least it wasn't in my version of the film, maybe they, they, like, really quickly cut it or something, maybe it's just, like, been mentioned in, like, interviews or something, I don't know, maybe it's not actually canon in the, but apparently this, you know, Apocalypse was Yahweh, because insulting the faith of the majority of your Western audience is brilliant marketing. No, I really wasn't particularly impressed with this movie. I've 
I'm trying to make this a thing in my reviews of comic book adaptations where I very early in the review talk about whether it's whether the selling point is worth it if it's impressive enough for yeah basically the selling point here would obviously be Apocalypse and his four horsemen versus the X-Men in in the climax it's it's fine there are some pretty good bits in there and yeah it's it's fine the the climax is almost the only place where there's any action do, i do not listen to the people who are saying this is a, an action packed civil war is an action packed movie the the this is not an action packed movie there's there's occasional action along the way a la batman v superman Batman v Superman and this, it's its just, it's the climax. I, I suppose you could say that comparatively, there might be more. The action probably goes on for longer in Batman v Superman, and not just because of slow motion. But the, in, in this, it is more, more, focused there's there's really only one big fight there at the end with every, yeah i don't know who thought it would be a good idea to have so many separate action scenes right after each other in batman v superman but yeah if if you're if you're looking for cool action and like yeah, it's just this this ain't it. Well the action can be cool, but there's very little of it is is what I'm I did not forget my notepad, thankfully, because there sure is a lot to talk about here. So There's 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 this cute little joke where like some of the teenage members of the you know some yeah of, of the of the school some of the teenage students they they I guess skip school it, yeah yeah basically and they go watch yeah eighty three Star Wars. Yeah, the 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 one that used to be called the bad one before the prequel trilogy, and they they make this cute little joke of like, you know, there's this thing of some of them are saying that the original was the best, some of them are saying that part two was the best, and then one of them says, at least we can agree that the third one was the worst one. Yeah, like with like with the third X-Men movie. See, that would be hilarious if this movie was that good by itself. And it really isn't. I really I swear I didn't think of this when I watched the trailers. I I, I maybe almost should have considering some of the ages. The Four Horsemen Part of the way feel like just emo kids acting out, and that is just a mistake. Obviously, yeah, obviously not all of them, considering age. But yeah, it just you you don't you don't really feel like. And I get, I get that, that that was what they were going for. They were trying to make these really dark, pained characters, but they don't. They just, they come off as, yeah, teenagers that are like, life is pain, so whatever, I should end the world.
one thing that this does have, which I appreciated, is scenes where Mystique and Beast relate to each other. And that is, I mean, that that's what's supposed to be, you know, the, the, the draw here, the characters. That's, yeah. The, the, the relatability and their, 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 their being interesting, not, not just their being so many of them. To, to briefly borrow from Simmons, Jean in this is Discount Brave. Seriously, the red, the red hair, she's firing arrows, yeah. And they do have some decent stuff with the two Summers brothers. There are times where Nightcrawler is actually funny. There's a sadly, I mean, Stanley cameo. Apocalypse has very few lines where he really is, like, epic. And that, I mean, that is Apocalypse. Is, is you know, he, he makes these big proclamations in this deep voice and makes everything sound important. And a lot of this, yeah, he just, he doesn't really. And there are way too many things he does that remind, at least me, of like pop culture like like at one point he's like you know he's he's been slumbering for mil, you know millennia and he awakens so he has to catch up of course and he literally he he goes up to a TV and like touches the screen and another character's like what are you, what are you doing learning and it just it's it's like data so much data it's just yeah they really should have done things to, to, to make this much more not comical. For some reason, I guess consistency, Rose Byrne is still using her American accent. Now that we're past first class, can't we, can't we give her the, the I mean, I don't know. I, I, I suppose it's possible that that she can't pull off the the Scottish. She she is Australian, but just yeah. Our, you know, I mean, we we this movie does so much to go more towards the comics, where you know, first class to an extent, like the the films before. We're trying to be just movies. They're trying to be more mainstream and marketable. But in this, you know, yeah. And at least it does acknowledge that I suppose I Yeah. That that there was you know the I'll save that for the thoughts video. The comic relief is very hit and miss. The we are really talking. Every few of those bits would get like chuckles from the audience, but yeah, the the movie tries to be funny a lot more than it actually is funny. Apocalypse is very difficult to take seriously. This is this is this is a bigger deal to me than it really should be. Psylocke's blood, psychic blade does not look anywhere near as good. It 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 looks okay, but it really. I'll I'll get more to, yeah.
in this, the Xavier's school actually does feel like a school. So that's, you know, that's that, that hasn't really happened since like the second movie. The third movie tried. Some of the comic book costumes really are, you know, you see some of that in the trailers as well. But yeah, they, they do actually, some of them, you know, look right. Some, some of them, they kind of sort of try. And it wasn't even necessary for it. Anyway, they didn't have to show it. It was just, it was, it was so, such a brief glimpse. If they didn't have a better design, all they had to do was move the scene. Very early on in the film, there is this forced cage match between Nightcrawler and Angel. And that is a, a decent kind of glimpse into, like, you know, this is what, you know, happens to some mutants. That, you know, if, if they're discovered by especially unseemly types. Matt Frewer is is there for like 10 seconds as a professor to explain. Havoc is really charming. I he was one of the parts of first class that I kind of liked and he's he's good here as well. He's he's in it for more than 5 seconds. The movie is two hours and 18 minutes, not counting the end credits. There is a post credit scene, so do stay for that. With, with the school, we get some really boring and bland high school melodrama. Apocalypse has been called the darkest of the villains of the X-Men series. He does not he doesn't care about, you know, human or mutant. He cares about weak and strong. And he is very Old Testament. He, you know, sees that the world is not as he would like it to be. And so he's going to destroy it so that something better can come of it. And Brent Singer said he wanted to explore kind of religion and cult with apocalypse and with this kind of and that's an okay element of this and you know apocalypse is stronger than magneto phoenix and the this this has the the big kind of destruction of cities of you know maybe of the world, of like Michael Bay films and Roland Emmerich films. And Brian Singer said that hasn't been seen in an X-Men movie, that hasn't even been seen in a comic book film. You know, Man of Steel does have some, but you know, arguably it is, here it is on a, on a greater scale. But is that really what we want? This is this is supposed to be a smarter and more character-driven franchise than what Michael Bay and Roland Emmerich make. And their films 
are also these kind of action thriller films for youths. This, this is not like how there's a bunch of Aronofsky in The Wolverine. That is really compelling, you know, whether or not you necessarily like Aronofsky, but I would say he is a fitting choice, an interesting, because there is so much... I already did a video on The Wolverine. My point is, Aronofsky does not make action movies like this, but if you, if you want to see the world destroyed, yeah, you know, that's what Roland Emmerich does. He's he's gotten better and better at it. In in t I I don't see why that needs to have a team of superpower people in the middle of it. I I don't know what that's supposed to add, and I I avoid Michael Bay. And and I did so before he was accused of raping childhoods. And I will not be touching the new Turtles movies under any circumstances. Right from the start, I thought this looked dumb, really dumb, and I wish the movie proved me wrong. Yes, we, we have Singer back, Still, again, he also did Superman Returns, and he's made bad design decisions right from the start, and he makes them in this as well. Apocalypse is such a dumb villain, and he's so hard to make... It's hard to make him look good in a film. It looks good on the comics page. I... I I've been watching the the special features on the DVDs of the of the X-Men movies these last few days. I forget exactly who said it and exactly when, but one of them made the point that in a comic book, this colorful costuming and such looks really good. But in a film, you can't necessarily make that work. The moment that you put that on an actual person, yeah, I think they did okay at, he doesn't look like a complete clown, although at least one person does say, does say who's this clown about Apocalypse. I mean, he, he has a lot of screen time, so it would be criminal if he looked truly unintentionally hilarious, and I don't think he does, but yeah, it just... In X-Men The Rise of Apocalypse, excuse me, Apocalypse himself does not have an awful lot of actual screen time in the full CGI cutscenes when you really, when, when you consider that he is the main villain of the game. But what he does have is just so much more compelling. I first played that game around the time when it came out. And that would be 2005, I want to say. I've played it over the years, but every single time when Apocalypse comes on screen, it's just, it's like it's it's burned into my memory just how he looks and the, the respect he commands. And just that doesn't happen here. Ever. And we can we can have in in films the the A on Captain America's helmet, but not on Apocalypse's belt. Good call. Yeah, I'm not the first to point out he kind of looks like Ivan Ooze at at points. He's he should be more bombastic. He's way too soft spoken. I've already mentioned almost every line of his. Like he will say kind of epic things sometimes, but, but he tends to talk, yeah, just kind of soft-spoken. I don't particularly know, I want to say it's Oscar Isaac, not Isaac Oscar, pretty sure it's Oscar, I, I don't really know him from, from 
anything else. Apocalypse could have been played by Tom Hardy or Idris Elba. I don't think that there's anything... I mean, I think it's Singer's direction more than Oscar Isaac's... I mean, if, if he... If he watches a few seconds of any, you know, the any any of the X Men animated shows, the aforementioned cutscene from Rise of Apocalypse, he would he would know that that's not what Apocalypse is. He's supposed to sound much grander. So I don't think it's it's I think it's Singer's direction, and. Yeah, I I would have loved to see Tom Hardy or Idris Elba if they got to do it as they would. Yeah, but no, I I genuinely I don't think that any I don't think Oscar Isaac particularly made mistakes in how he played Apocalypse. I think it's to an extent the writing and especially the direction. And Apocalypse, of course, has a number of abilities. He is seemingly immortal. He has telekinesis. He... Some of this I shouldn't say, I suppose. And he's extremely strong and has some healing ability. And as the trailers reveal, yes, he will, at at least one point in the film, make, like, his foot or his hand, like, really big, and use that to fight. Yeah. And he, you know, he does the, the Hamlet thing, alas, for Yorick. Yeah. On the poster, not on the film. Days of Future Past was great, but it was so because it limited its cast, in particular its powered cast, and thus could have an intense focus on yeah, on, on this cast and the conflict that Yeah, that that came of that. Basically, everyone was fighting over Mystique, over what she would, how she would approach a certain, yeah, the, the assassination, it's, it's, yeah, it's not exactly a spoiler. She wants to assassinate the, the Bolivar Trask who creates the Sentinels, and in spite of this, she she has agency. She's not just, you know, the pawn of, of any of them. Again, I'm not going to go into detail. I did videos on this, but now we're back to a ton of characters, most of which are just going to be in the background. This is what the series has been doing since the first film all the way through First Class. We have way too many much too powerful characters, so they have to pair off or be taken out of the fight so that it doesn't become a complete mess. At least there are mutants on both sides of the, the conflict, unlike even X2. And... I shouldn't give that away. Okay, maybe some of the leader types will fight each other. In comic books, you can draw dozens of different characters fighting all at once, and the, the reader will fill in what happens between them. You can't do that in a film. You have to... Yeah. And and so we end with end up with this kind of thing. And given that, you know, in with 
a ton of comic books, you know, over the course of the issues, you can focus on separate characters. You know, this, this kind of idea, if you have to do it in the film medium, just, it, it works better as a TV series. At least, that's what I thought I would until I watched Heroes. They cast Olivia Munn. And as Psylocke. She, she, when I first picked up the books, she was one of the characters that most, like, that seemed most badass to me. I mean, she has a psychic blade. She, she knows martial arts. She's an assassin. And they, they cast Olivia Ma I did, There is some really cool Psylocke action. I will say that. But Olivia Munn cannot look tough. It just, again, she's, the character is supposed to project this, this pain, this, this dark past that is supposed to tell us this is, and, and she just, she can't. She was a, a horseman in the comics as well as his arch angel was. Not the, yeah, I suppose I shouldn't give, you know, if you haven't watched the trailers, who the, the other ones are. And Olivia Munn did learn fencing, and yeah, there's some cool stuff with that, but yeah, we're, we're going backwards. We, you know, young versions of the cast from the first three, a bunch of those, at least. Why not do interesting, different ones? I mean, for as strangely grab bag as it was in its choice of mutants, First Class at least did bring in some new ones. Seriously, Storm, Jean, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, but at least they're recast so we can compare performances and cast choices, which rarely goes well. Honestly, I'm not even sure... They may not have been told to emulate the performances from the other, or maybe, maybe some of it is just more subtle but they didn't really feel like they were trying to do which which is i guess that's better if it you know it has to be either you try to do what the other you know or you or you make make it your own character and yeah i mean it, there there are yeah there, there, there are aspects to these new ones that I like, and it's not like they, all the performances were amazing in the first three movies. The, the only new cast member here I know is Nightcrawler, who was the boy in The Road the film about the post-apocalypse which I I own the DVD and yes yeah, Storm and Nightcrawler especially will of course have to be paired off yet again and that of course raises the question does Singer manage to create memorable action with the X-Men that he's done, that he's, yeah, used before to an extent, but like, if you are like, for Lindsay Ellis and any other Nightcrawler fans out there, this has nothing on the Nightcrawler action in X2. Not even, I, 
I think he just he sat down, he started watching it, and and just before that first you know scene was even over, he just he he turned off the DVD and said. I Okay, I'll, I'll, that, that didn't actually happen. I, I, maybe someday someone will make a great, you know, some, some great action scenes with, with Nightcrawler. The, the, the teleportation does see some cool use. And I, let's see. Yeah, it's he 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 redoes some images and ideas. Not not in a good way, but and I wasn't sure I I don't think Jane likes people who go Hadouken. And she, of course, yeah, she doesn't have that much power. It's, it's, you know, she's got telekinesis and she's scared of her power. So, like Scarlet Witch, and no, this has nothing on the Scarlet Witch scenes in Age of Ultron and Civil War. Go watch Civil War again. Maybe I should. Cyclops is boring. But he's less boring here than he was in the first three. I will admit that. But it again, to, to an extent, is just this kind of teen angst. And we've, we've seen this before. And I, I'm still, there's, there's nothing this Cyclops, nothing about this Cyclops makes him feel like really necessary. I, I get why he was in the first three movies. He's a big deal in the comics. I, where to be fair, he can also be fairly boring, but... You know, he is he is a leader of the X-Men. It's yeah. So I get why when they started out making these movies, they kinda need to, you know, these are the X-Men. Cyclops is boring, but he is basically the leader. He's yeah. But why now? Why do they Yeah, it's it's you know they're they're trying to build the old team again but just i mean they they already they they have accepted that this is this is clearly not the same timeline as the first 3 movies so why why couldn't they just pretend like oh hey i bet havoc has a brother who's also a summers Maybe he exists somewhere. We don't have to deal with that because Havoc is so much more charming. And it's, oh, hey, there's Havoc. And now he leaves us with his boring brother who's annoying. And, you know, Mystique is given, like, a rousing speech since, you know, she's known as the Mockingjay. And she's kind of, sort of, at times, kind of like a leader, which, you know, when 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 she was a big deal in Days of Future Past, I heard some say that it was because in between, you know, Jennifer Lawrence had become a star. I didn't feel like, she, she was a really big deal in the comic. She, she is the assassin in the, the original story as well. And she actually, you know, this is a character who is very different in the, you know, in the continuity of the first three from first class, so it made sense to explore that, and yeah, but here I do kind of feel like she's there because 
it's yeah they they try to after the events of days of future past she has a certain level of importance in the the world of the you know yeah in the world that these movies take place in and i i get where that comes from but yeah and you know the moment you bring up the fact that Jennifer Lawrence is a star some people are going to say that she shouldn't be i i don't know i've liked her performances but i've only seen her in you know the x-men movies winter's bone and the hunger games films and again about cyclops there really aren't that many major MCU characters that bore me and Cyclops is supposed to be kind of you know the the, the boy scout the the one who you know he knows all the rules and he plays by the you know he's most like Captain America and Captain America is so fantastic in every, there's there are characters that in some of the MCU movies that they're in they're not as you know they they maybe have moments where they're not as you know actually they they do tend to all be really well handled in the Anyway, Captain America is f fantastic in every single MCU movie that he's in. There's just, yeah, you know, every, every his, his lines, you remember them, and they're like, you can, you can, it's, it's to where, yes, this is the guy who plays by the rules. This is the guy who just, you know, he's he's just the, the, the he's the hero type. He's the person who puts on a suit and says, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to change the world. And that seems like it's going to be so boring, but they write it so well every time that it's always compelling. And that's just... Yeah, really, this, this Cyclops, I, I suppose it's supposed to be before, this Cyclops isn't that mature and, like, all about the rules. He's just kind of an annoying teenager. I wondered if Storm would have a wonky African accent at least some of the time, if it would make her lines even more stilted. She does not have a lot of dialogue in English, but yes, the answer is yes. And I don't think she has a single bad one-liner, but again, a lot of her dialogue is not in English. It is possible that some of it was just translated to, you know, just, okay, there's something in there about what happens when this is just going to, Ignore that. This is what she actually said. And she is very important, but she it does kind of feel earned in this. Although it's ridiculously convenient how her her introduction, I yes. And she she isn't barely in the film in this one either. I thought that maybe they would at least draw on the development and the screen time that the characters have had before, but again, these are these are very different. Like Nightcrawler is again very, very gentle and, and kind of nice. I guess that's more or less it. I don't know. Jean still has that kind of conflict thing, but it's just there's there's a lot of teen angst on top of it.
you know, and, and I mean, at least Mystique, who's also been in a bunch of these, they've done different things with her. And, you know, this gave them a chance to do Angel right. There's, there's some of it that they did fairly right. And, yeah, there are just, there, there are far too many characters in this. And, Singer still does not juggle them as if as as well as Joss Whedon or the Russo brothers. I will say that you know basically everyone gets something with you know something they do with their powers that is at least memorable in some way. It is more fun than Batman v Superman. The, the film is too, I was referring to my root canal. The... They still don't know what to do with Mystique in action scenes. Much like in First Class and in Days of Future Past, they just... Yeah, she just... You know, hid a bunch. And Jean is played by a Game of Thrones actor like Trask was in Days of Future Past. I guess, given Trask in Days of Future Past, you you there there was some some hope that maybe every Game of Thrones actor to join an X-Men movie cast would bring it's not really her fault, would would be very, very dignified and and not an annoying angsty teenager. And the trailers for this were pretty bad. I I tried to tell myself so were some of the ones for Days of Future Past, but yeah, the in the trailer they they you know they they have that line about you know four would follow him like like horsemen. That is just as awkward and as forced in in the film as it is in the trailer. It's it's actually kind of like Yeah, just I I wow, just just I know it's superficial, but I cannot get over how goofy Quicksilver looks. Excuse me, and I'm talking about when his face doesn't look all rubbery from, you know, being sped up. The hair does not fit at all, which it did for the MCU one. Those dorky goggles, I get it. I, I, it's like a motorcycle helmet. You don't want stuff flying at your face at that speed without... Yeah, I will say the, the, his family relation here is actually, actually I suppose it's still just barely, yeah, it still barely matters at all. And Jubilee is in this. And this is 
a culmination of the, you know, Xavier, Magneto, Mystique, Beast dynamic. The Danger Room does appear again, and it is just as unexplained and fan as as the last time. Yeah, this takes place in a reset timeline. When I heard that there was going to be a ton of action in this, which again, there is not, I worried, given that, you know, the it's, it's rare for an X-Men continuity film to have a lot of action, and the ones that do tend to be the worst ones, such as, you know, Origins. I guess that is more or less the one. You know, maybe it was... Singer trying to prove that he could do it at least once, and I almost feel bad that I, I, the action of Days of Future Past, I am on record as calling it mostly irrelevant, but at least it's there, at least you're not sitting for the whole movie just waiting for some like like the characters will actually in this they'll they'll show they have powers they'll they'll maybe do something maybe even something kind of cool with their powers but there's not action there's there's almost the cage match that i mentioned earlier short and unsatisfactory and i'm not saying you know i get it it's it's you know, it's a forced cage match. They're they're also deriving some drama from it. We're not necessarily supposed to be sitting there cheering them on because this is clearly not like Nightcrawler is literally he they they bring him there in a crate because you know if, if he could see he could teleport away. So they bring him in a crate and they literally just you know, you know, empty the crate into the, the thing and then close behind him. And he, he tries to run away, but, you know, the, like, fencing is electrified. And then our, the angel tells him, fight or they will shoot us both. So there is that, and... and so, so I get it's it's not you know, and that's 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 not a terrible dramatic moment. I mean, that's that's like for for a second, you know, you you just briefly like that's that's that happens when when mutants are known, but they have to that then when people know that mutants exist and some of them are incredibly powerful, some might be fun to watch fight. Is Singer insulting the art? Is he saying, if you want to watch... No. Some of them are fun to see fight. But they have to keep hidden because they don't know what people will do. Some of them, when discovered, will be forced to fight for people's entertainment. And it's maybe sort of like a, a turn on the, the Wolverine cage match in the first X-Men movie, but nevertheless, you'd expect at least some action from, yeah. Briefly on the, the Days of Future Pet, the reason the action is largely irrelevant is because about a third of it didn't happen, and about a third of it won't happen because of time travel. Some have said that this is very much a case of more is less. And it starts strong with enjoyable intros and a getting the band back together feeling, but it fizzles out. 
and ends up a mind-numbing montage of poorly choreographed combat and outrageous widespread destruction. Yeah, that's that's fairly Yeah. Others have said that there's no memorable action, although Quicksilver comes the closest to that. Yeah, more or less. And the script is bad. It has too much of everything except what it needs the most, novelty, creativity, and fun. It's redundant and stale. And it's, it's all about how life is hard for mutants and yeah which as the reader also notes that's all that's all the series is about that's all it knows how to talk about and yeah it just does not and at the risk of sounding like a broken record yeah just i'm sorry but the mcu is schooling everyone else because the MCU can go dark without there there are dark films there but there can still be some fun and it doesn't it doesn't get depressingly dark and the, there are times in this where it feels dark just like like it feels almost kind of bitter there, there are things where, where just, like, it feels like someone, you know, just, just saying, fine, you want dark? Here, I'll give you dark. And, yeah, and, and, I'm sorry, if you think that the MCU is just all light and, and fun, then you, you haven't been watching. And it's been called boring, contrived. Yeah, the the way that there there are yeah, I shouldn't give too much away, but there there are definitely ridiculous contrivances in here. And Others have noted that, excuse me, it is better than Batman v Superman. I, I, I think it, it, I'm a little, I wish that sites like Rotten Tomatoes had more than one, may, maybe at least in, in special cases, like with Batman v Superman, had more than just the number, because as, as, good and useful as it is that it's clear via the 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 just it it's it's been slower more recently but it does slide down in the the rating batman v superman does on rotten tomatoes and that 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 gets us some of the way but i do think that it's there should be like a a like a an, an additional meter named something like how much sense the movie makes. So, something along those lines. Because I really, I'm seeing films. Huntsman has a lower tomato, you know, tomato meter score than Batman v Superman. There is no doubt in the world that Batman v Superman has more overall qualities than Huntsman. Huntsman is purely, it is a movie purely designed to squeeze some more money out of a movie that not that many people like to begin with, but you know, that's what, if you were getting an Angry Birds movie, everything that has already been established and that could make some money and and I will say about the angry at the very least 
there was all, already a conflict to explore there. Not the case, as far as I know, with the Cabbage Patch Kids. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's not new that something that's popular, you know, gets its own movie, even if it doesn't make sense to make a movie out of it. And there, there have been worse cases. Nevertheless, The Huntsman makes sense. You can watch that movie. You can watch it not knowing the first movie at all, and you'll still basically be able to follow it. You'll, you'll know more or less what happens over the course of it. That is not necessarily going to be the case with Batman v Superman. Which, which really, like, like it's, it's being argued. Batman v Superman is a movie that will continue to be argued about for many years to come. And the, the sheer number of different things people took from it, most of which just, just indicate that it wasn't, that they, they didn't think it through when they wrote it. Just, it is, it is, it's impressive just how much there is in that movie and just how little of it makes any sense. Anyway, the, the, I believe same reviewer goes on to note that, yeah, this movie is nowhere near the level of Civil War. It's more sadistic and it it cares a lot less about collateral damage than the this series has before. And yeah, that is kind of uncomfortable. I, I really don't know, and, and it wasn't necessary at all. It, yeah, like, like, the climax has a lot of destruction, and recently, even Batman v Superman got into this, collateral damage is like, yeah, like, like, let's try to avoid people getting hurt from this. I mean, the, the, the heroes do try to stop the thing from happening. They do try to stop the collateral. The, they try to stop the source of it. But you don't really see them going around saving people. And it's it's that kind of thing. Oh, but you're not really seeing any. Maybe all those places were empty. It's, no, tons of people died here. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just kind of uncomfortable. It's, that, that again, I mean, when you, when you watch the, the, the disaster movies of Roland Emmerich, what you're seeing a bunch of the time is people just narrowly escaping death. And that, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I no longer watch the Nostalgia Craze, so I don't know if he retired the Boomer Will Live gag, but I certainly, I wouldn't blame him if he didn't, because it is, it is true. There's clearly so many people dying for, oh, this, this one dog will live. But this movie doesn't have that either. This movie, it's just, there's just a ton of destruction going on. And then there, there's this group of people fighting. And it's just, yeah. And... Yeah, the, the, another reviewer notes that, like Apocalypse himself, this loses its humanity early and doesn't find anything to replace it with. It, it, um, there are times where it really feels like, yeah, the, the movie just really wants you to feel sad, like being a mutant is hard, and possibly life in the 80s was... 
sometimes really bad. There was there was bad Star Wars. <laughs> back when back when people thought that was, ah man. You know, I guess Star Wars 2 can be bad. They had no idea. And the, you know, it does go into the themes of need for family, struggle to accept oneself, and it being hard to let go of the past. You know, the, the reviewer, one reviewer notes that, you know, this has always been part of the X-Men, but... It rarely resonates as as well or as deeply here as as here. I disagree about it resonating here, particularly. I, I felt like it was just parts of this really feel like X Men Three. The studio, there there were two stories that they really wanted to put in the movie and one of them is apocalypse and this big threat and the other story is basically this like bringing students to you know excuse me bring young mutants to Xavier's excuse me school and you know the the people yeah life in the school and then the the two movies just the, these two just kind of have to awkwardly coexist and it's not x3 bad but it's not exactly good either it's i i don't maybe maybe there is some like real studio pull and they they just you know, someone panicked and said, what? We don't have the original team. Bring the original team back in. And, yeah, it's, and especially high school teen melodrama has been done so many times. And it's been done well. So I don't understand why they couldn't, do it better here because that i mean it's such a big part of this the the and it's just not very you just you don't really care about these yeah Now, I rewatched The Usual Suspects, the only non X Men brand singer movie that I own or have watched. I rewatched the first three X Men movies The Road, since The Boy is in it, and Days of Future Past. I did not rewatch Origins, nor did I rewatch first class because there's only so much punishment that I can take. Why do I say that of first class as well? Watch the Blockbuster Busters top 10 first class fails. The, the one thing in the whole video that I disagree with him on is the the point about who is and who becomes a Nazi. I, I, I think that their choice in the film was compelling but everything else yeah, I also did not rewatch The Wolverine. I, I have already watched that movie twice, and it doesn't really affect the, the team much. And I replayed Mutant, X-Men Mutant Academy, X-Men the official video game, and X-Men Legends to The Rise of Apocalypse. And that last one I played as Cyclops, Magneto, Nightfall, and Storm since... They are in the game as well as this movie. So is Jean, but she sucks. She sucks in both of those games. Actually, not the official one, since that's between X-Men 2 and 3. And so she isn't in it for, yeah, reasons that you will know if you know those films. It's just, 
it's hard to translate her powers well to dealing with just a few enemies. You know, she can't, like, use the Dark Phoenix Force that wouldn't... Yeah. Anyway, ran around mostly as Cyclops. Booney points out that all he can do is shoot the beams. But in that game, they did come up with a lot of different uses for that. And I did not use Nightcrawler since... <laughs> much. Since I have already exploited the crap out of that exploit of, you know, where, which, which of the teleport abilities you put, yeah, you, you'll, you'll be able to find it if you look. Obviously, I did unlock that exploit so that the, the AI could use it. I'm not a monster. And... Given that I can live with Scarlet Witch sucking in The Rise of Apocalypse, the reason I did not play as her leading up to watching Civil War... I guess I could have. I... I find it interesting just how differently characterized Nightcrawler is between the the official game where he genuinely like he doesn't even want to like beat up these armed guards who are you know literally trying to kill him and the others and he's like trying to save people and such he you know he feels so bad he ends up quitting mostly because Alan Cumming did not want to do the makeup again. I understand that completely, but I, I really do wish that they had, that when they cast him, they had like made it completely. I mean, Rebecca Romaine even, even says as much, you know, in, in like interviews and such, again, on the discs of the, the, the first movie for sure, probably also the second, that if you aren't a model, you can't, you know, yeah, you, you can't sit still and have people put makeup on you for that long every day that you're shooting a movie. So, yeah, I mean, even, even like, this, this same lesson was learned on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, you know, the, the, a certain Ferengi mother, just, Singer is like a Trekkie, he, yeah, anyway. And how Nightcrawler is characterized in Rise of Apocalypse, where he was, he will sarcastically apologize and admit he's enjoying this too much after actually stabbing people to the point where they bleed to death. The only one I had to get from the library was Days of Future Past. The rest of these I actually own. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.